this is Jo from Math True to Me. Today we're doing geometry and we're going to be talking about the angles that are formed on parallel lines. So, a line that cuts across a set of parallel lines is called a transversal. So if we have some parallel lines like this, remember the little arrows mean that those lines are parallel. If I draw a third line that crosses over both of them, that line is called a transversal. Now when that transversal cuts across the parallel lines, there are three types of angles that can be formed. There are corresponding angles, which form an F shape. Okay, I might draw a little picture of that over here for you. So if I draw my parallel lines and my transversal, the F shape would be that angle and that angle there. So you see, if you extend the arms, So if I make a little angle in here, oh, that's not a very good texture. Let's try that one. So if I make those arms bigger like that, and I make these arms bigger, you can see that that is actually making an F like that. Okay, now the angles underneath there are equal angles, okay, because they're corresponding. But the F doesn't always have to be a normal F like this. It could be an upside down F and it could be a back to front F. So it could be on the back side of here as well. Okay, so an F, any way that you rotate it or flip it is corresponding angles. Okay, our next type is called alternate angles and they form a Z shape. So here's our parallel lines. If I Cut it with my transversal. If I draw an angle there and an angle there, see how that's forming a Z shape. That means that this angle and this angle would be equal. Okay. Again, it can be a backwards Z shape, so it could be the ones on this side as well. And the third type is called co-interior angles. I'll draw that down below. Parallel lines cut by a transversal. Co-interior form a C shape. And interior makes me think of inside, interior of something. So it's the inside angles of your parallel lines. So see that there? There is your C shape, meaning this angle and this angle are the ones that we're talking about. But notice that I've given them different symbols because these angles are not equal. They add up to 180 degrees, okay? So they are the three rules that you need to know for parallel lines. Now let me show you how to use those rules to help you find the value of some pronumerals. So in the examples here, number one, find the value of each pronumeral giving reasons. Okay, so I want to find the value of K here. Now, if we draw the arms on that angle and the arms on that angle and join them up, we've made an F shape, which is corresponding angles, and those angles must be equal. So that means that K is equal to 107 degrees. Now, what I'd like you to practice with this is it says here, giving reasons. So I want you to practice, once you've identified which of the three rules it is, to write that rule in brackets afterwards, okay? So the rule for this one was corresponding. So I'm going to write corresponding, oop, corresponding angles, okay? A little symbol there for angles, okay? Let's go on to question B, part B. Let's draw the arms on the angle. There's an arm on that angle, and then there's an arm on that angle. And we connect them up, we have a Z shape. And that means that those angles are equal and they're called alternate. So that means that M is equal to 65 degrees, giving reasons is called alternate angles. Okay, part C, we have two pronumerals here to find. Let's just do one at a time. Let's start with the P. 
So there's the arms for angle P and the 54 degrees. If we connect those up, they're both on the inside or they're making a downward C. If you think you rotate that around, it's a C shape, which means that it's co-interior and those angles add to 180 degrees. So to find P, P would be equal to 180 minus 54 degrees, which is 126 degrees. Writing the reason, co-interior angles. Okay, now we need to do Q. Now there's a few different ways you could do this. Q is this angle. And if I go back to my 54 and connect them up, they're making a sideways F shape. Okay, so Q will be equal to 54 because of the F shape was called corresponding. Corresponding angles. Okay, you could also have worked from the P that you found here and you could have used it. They are supplementary, a rule that we learned in our last lesson to find that as well, which is just as okay to do as long as you show you're working out over here and give the appropriate reason. Okay, question two, determine whether AB is parallel to CD, justify your answer. Now it looks like AB and CD are parallel, but we're trying to work out whether they are actually parallel or not. Now, if they're parallel, it would mean that we would be able to see some of these angles being equal like they're meant to be. Okay, so for example, at the moment, the two angles that I'm given don't form an F, a Z or a C shape. Okay, but what if I used my supplementary rule here to find this angle in here? All right, so this one in here would be equal to 180 minus the 76, which is equal to 104 degrees. Okay, so that angle there is 104 degrees. Okay, now that angle and that angle that I've just found form an upside down F shape. Okay, and they are, I've just shown that they are equal. So because those angles are equal in the corresponding F shape, that means that those lines must be parallel. So I can say A, B is parallel. Now the symbol for parallel is two vertical lines like that. It's parallel to C, D because the corresponding, because that was the F shape, corresponding angles are equal. Okay, that's it for the examples. Time for you to practice. Okay, so if you're feeling confident, you can pause the video and try these few questions here and then restart to see the answers. Otherwise, if you need to, you can work through these questions with me for a little bit of extra practice. Okay, for question one, find the value of the pronumeral in each of the following giving reasons. So V and 85 are forming a C shape. So that means that they're co-interior and they'll add to give 180 degrees. So if I want to find V, I start with 180 and subtract off the 85 degrees, which tells me that it's 95 degrees. And I write the reason in brackets, co-interior angles. In part B, we have two pronumerals here to find. Let's start with the W. So I have parallel lines here. That W and the 76 are forming a Z shape. A backwards Z shape, but still a Z shape. So that means that they are equal. W is equal to 76 degrees because of alternate angles. Okay, 
So now I have to find x over here. Well, 83 and the x are forming an f shape. Okay, so that means that x will be equal to the 83 degrees and the f shape is called corresponding angles. Okay, part C, we're trying to find y, which is this angle in here. Okay, it and the 66 are forming an F shape. So that means that Y is going to be equal to 66 because of corresponding angles. Okay, and question two, determine whether AB is parallel to CD, justify your answer. So let's find out perhaps let's do which one will we find let's move this one let's find out what that angle there is you could do either you could find that one you could find that one i just need to move them into a shape that works with one of my alternate corresponding or co-interior angles i'm going to try find this one here so i'm going to use this straight line which means if i do 180 minus the 81 that will give me 99 degrees okay so that means that angle there is 99 degrees now those angles the 101 and the 99 form a z shape which means if they're parallel those angles would need to be equal but they're not equal so that means therefore a b is not parallel to CD because the Z shape is alternate angles. Alternate angles are not equal. Okay, that's it for our lesson today on geometry and parallel lines. Keep practicing and join me next time.